Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Let's go now to my good friend, Dr. Charles Camosi. Like I said, he is... Uh, he's a lot of things. Professor of Medical Humanities at the Creighton University School of Medicine, holder of the Monsignor Curran Fellowship in Moral Theology at St. Joseph Seminary in New York. Tons of books you should read, all sorts of articles, but today we're going to talk about a very fascinating one. Charlie, thank you for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. I think I want to I wanna say that I am the most... Um, well, I'm a fan of Iowa Catholic Radio living in New Jersey. Do you think I'm I'm the most... The, the single most important fan of Iowa Catholic Radio in the state of New Jersey. Well, I don't know if that's possibly true or not, but we, we, you know, you know how like uh, uh, colleges will have like alumni uh, gatherings in bars, like in states far fled. <laughs> but, yeah, we can have the Iowa Catholic Radio Fan Club of New Jersey, and you can be the president. We'll just let you do that, man. Uh- I I will gladly take that up. I find myself listening at least once a week, and so I'm finally glad to be back on the show. Again. Uh, Excellent. That, thank you so much. Now, look, um, to, you, we, we've talked uh, many times. You're, you're my friend. We, we're both philosophers. We both do ethics. I would say there's like a 90% chance that if we're in a room, you and I are probably going to say something people will consider pessimistic because ethics is hard work. However, I want to say, here I am on the morning show trying to get people uh, jazzed up, ready to go. And, Charlie, here you are writing a very hopeful article. Do you, 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 you wrote this down, man. You said not, I think Catholic, the Catholic Church can help improve U.S. health care. You said you think it can save U.S. health care. So, making the bold claim like that, let's start out. Why does U.S. health care need saving? And what do you think is some of the first ways to talk about how the Catholic Church can be the catalyst to do that saving? Well, I think let's let's start with the negative and then move to the positive. The negative is our current health care system is really not a health care system. It's more of a disease management system. So we um, and if we do, and we manage diseases not by thinking about sort of coherent whole person understandings of why people are sick. But instead of, you know, sort of dividing human beings into their component body parts, right? We have a hyper-specialized system which says, well, if you got a pain here, why don't you go see that specialist for that part of the body? Or if you got something over there, go see that other specialist. It makes a lot of people a lot of money, um, but it really doesn't, especially with our chronic disease um, epidemic, really, in this country, um, you know, with all, all sorts of the things we could talk about behind that. Um, our, our system really doesn't address it. It sort of manages it. Um, whereas a Catholic approach, which is a whole person approach, which is an approach which does focus not on dividing people into component parts, but on people in the fullness of who they are, um, uh, that at least shows some promise for addressing the, the structural problems we have there. I think that people, too, like uh, the structural problems – People can go sometimes like, okay, but that's that's above my pay grade, and there's so much money involved. But I like how you made this specific point, that if health, like just in its fundamental understanding, is about the technical term homo, homeostasis, right, bringing back people to an integrated whole, you're not going to be able to reintegrate someone, right? Dis-ease means that there's this uneasiness, this I'm against myself. That's what That's what it really means to be sick. We're not going to be able to do that for people if we don't at least understand that as the goal and then try to do that with all of the, the sort of things that go into a healthcare system. If you, if you think in fragmented ways systematically, you're going to think in fragmented ways about the individual, too. In your time working with uh, medical practitioners and teaching them ethics— is that is is that maybe where a lot of this you started to see this coalesce about what the Catholic Church can do different? Oh yeah, um, and the nice thing about it is we can point to our history and say, you know what, um, it was especially Catholic women religious Catholic sisters and nuns who are responsible for a good chunk of the healthcare system in the United States as we've come to see it today. Uh, you know, um, the Mercy College of um, health sciences that, that you work for um, and that is invoked on Iowa Catholic Radio regularly um, is a great example of a school that was started by these um, founders, uh, foundresses, and and have this vision that I'm very, actually quite jealous you get to impart <laughs> to your students and say, hey, it doesn't need to be the way that it, it currently is. We can imagine this a different way, an integrated way. And, and nurses, it seems to me, and you helped me learn this, you helped me understand this, though, 
um, that nursing, um, which is very, very Catholic in its history, um, actually is better positioned to address this than doctoring is, right? Because nurses of their very nature are caring for whole people, right, in the fullness of who they are, including in their relationships with family and their environment and often get to know their stories and, and help them integrate, um, reintegrate themselves in a way that from, from the disintegration that the disease or, you know, and they're, sometimes their environment, sometimes their family, sometimes their, you know, psychological situation. Sometimes um, it, could, it could be a whole number of things, but it takes a kind of care for the whole person, a listening to the whole person, a kind of sixth sense or intuition about this that so many nurses have and have developed over the course of, you know, their craft over the years. Um, so thank you for helping me understand that. That's something I've tried to impart uh, to both my nursing students and, though they, they aren't so happy to hear this all the time, my medical students, because they need to hear it too. Well, now to make this just Providence coming together, Amy here in the studio, who's uh, helping me out this morning, she not only is a nurse, but a graduate of Mercy College of Health Sciences. Is that not correct? Correct. I graduated in 1997. And have had a, multiple experiences to work in different platforms. And so it's an honor to chat with you this morning. I, I have your article pulled up here, and I'm just noting the last part of it. Uh, Catholics are wonderfully suited to be the agent of change. And this is I so touching. Tell me more about how that affects you and how you integrate that into your teaching. Well, I mean, first of all, it's just a numbers game. So we have one in seven beds in the United States is in a Catholic institution. Um, we are, again, have this history that, uh, you know, if you look back um, around the time of the Civil War, in fact, when um, these schools and, and hospitals were built, um, you know, it was often by Catholic women, religious Catholic institutions who did it. So we have both the current numbers and the, histo the historical record, the historical memory of being able to do these things. And so if we are going to pivot away from the disintegration of the human person into component body parts and think about healthcare as reintegration of the person, you know, it, it'd be hard to imagine the Catholic um, sort of approach, Catholic institutions, Catholic healthcare systems, Catholic uh, medical schools and nursing schools being at the forefront of something like that. And that's a, that's at least what I've what I'm passionate about these days. And it is it is unusually hopeful for me. Bo is right about that. I tend to <laughs> be, be doom and gloom with regard to these things. But uh, but there is there is a chance that we could get get our crap together on this and, and move in a positive direction. It seems to me. Absolutely. I, I had an opportunity for a moment to practice nursing in a Christian and a Catholic uh, practice, uh, family practice. And I just found it so amazing to be able to invite the Holy Spirit into my practice and into that room with the patient. And you never know what's going to come up. And you are so prepared. You have the armor of our Blessed Mother with you. You have the Holy Spirit present with you. And if we could just find a way to talk these nursing students through this process and have the courage, have the courage to practice with conviction, it changes the entire face of how you care for your patients. And what's so interesting, if we have, as we showed Christ at the center of this and our inspiration for this, I mean, this is, you know, the great healer, right? Christ, the great Amen. caregiver, the great health care provider. And, and, and Jesus, is, of course, is always connecting his healings to the broader spiritual health of the person, right? It's almost always related to that. In fact, sometimes uh, there's a specific reference to sins being forgiven as part of the healing process, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and so to, to, to carry on that healing mission of Christ um, should be exactly where we need to live, both as practitioners uh, you know, healthcare providers, healers, uh, carers for other whole persons, but also, you know, as patients, right? We got to make an effort, I think, also to, uh, if we can, uh, seek out places where we can, um, you know, share those values in common. Well, Charlie, um, we're, we're, of course, wrapping up today. There's never enough time to talk to you about all of this. I, I actually want to say something even broader about the work you do, make you sound even more hopeful than you're thinking of, because so much of what you do, both in the medical uh, uh, field of things, but also in your work talking about 
overcoming political strife. Uh, your, you know, the Magenta Press line, uh, the, the, the book, We're One Church, that you've talked about. Uh, the idea is, you know, the world will be saying, oh, we're aching for someone to help us overcome polarization or we're aching for people to figure out how to do something about medicine. And if the church will just be what Christ asked it to be, uh, it's just sitting there waiting for the taking. So if people want to engage with the broad spectrum of things that you do in, the, in that field, where can people find you online and uh, uh, in books and things like that? Well, probably the easiest place to go is my website, charlescamosi.com, or they can go to Twitter or X at ccamosi, at C-C-A-M-O-S-Y. But I have to say, Bo, you've been a real inspiration to me as well in this project, and so we got a, we got a good cadre of people committed to these things, and that's another reason to be hopeful as well. Well, amen. Well, it's always hopeful and, and wonderful, and I am grateful to get to talk with people like you, Charles uh, Camosi. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. It's a joy to meet you. My pleasure. Thank you both. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.